Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. If you have not subscribed the channel, please do so and hit the bell icon so that you are updated with all the upcoming videos. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic in pharmacology which is called ACE inhibitors. Now in pharmacology, whenever there is a drug, you first must know what is uh, the basic function of the drug, how the drug is working. What is the target molecule on which the drug is working? Then you should know um, after the mechanism of action that what are the therapeutic uses of that particular drug, which means that what are the indications, when to prescribe the drug or when does a physician prescribe that particular drug? And then you should also know what are the side effects. So these are the three or four things that you must master about each drug. So let's begin with ACE inhibitors. Now the name indicates it is inhibitor of ACE. What is ACE? Angiotensin converting enzyme. Now I hope you have already seen my video on renin angiotensin aldosterone system if not watch that video to understand the physiology of renin angiotensin aldosterone system which briefly i will um, reiterate here see from uh, the liver there is a molecule called angiotensinogen it is converted into angiotensin 1 by the action of renin which is released from the nephron the jg cells okay jg cells release renin and renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 Angiotensin 1 is then converted into angiotensin 2 and this happens by the action of angiotensin converting enzyme which is released from the vascular lining of lungs okay and this angiotensin 2 is then responsible for increasing the blood pressure and also increasing the blood volume okay now think it backwards if you block ACE if ACE inhibitors are used and ACE is blocked then obviously angiotensin 2 is blocked and when angiotensin 2 is blocked I can also say that levels of angiotensin 2 will go down and when the levels go down all the functions which were performed by angiotensin 2 will also go down which means blood pressure will be reduced and therefore ACE inhibitors are the first line of drug to be used in anti-hypertensive drug selection okay so whenever there is a patient whom you are treating for blood pressure particularly if the person also has stroke and diabetes and heart failure alongside ACE inhibitors are the drugs to be used you identify these drugs by the suffix pril so you see the names captopril enalapril lisinopril all this pril thing whenever you see pril you think that this is an ACE inhibitor. An ACE inhibitor, you should uh, juggle your memory that it is inhibiting ACE and because ACE is inhibited, level of angiotensin 2 is going down and the blood pressure is going down. Okay, So this all complete paragraph should be very clear to you. Let's move on to the next page and see what they're talking about. So actions of ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors lower the blood pressure and I just told you how by decreasing the levels of angiotensin 2. Okay, And blah, 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 blah. The drugs blocks the enzyme ACE, obviously, this is why they are called ACE inhibitors, which cleaves angiotensin 1 to form angiotensin 2. So I just told you, what happens is angiotensin 1 is in normal physiology converted into angiotensin 2 by the presence of ACE. And if you are blocking ACE, then this is not going to be produced. Okay, so that is the mechanism. Now, this is an important thing to remember. ACE is also re responsible for breakdown of bradykinin. Now, bradykinin is, is a molecule in your body which is broken down by angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, now this bradykinin will be increased in concentration if you are blocking ACE. So ACE usually breaks down bradykinin, but when ACE inhibitor is being used, so you are blocking ACE, the levels of bradykinin will go up and this can also induce cuff. Therefore, one of the side effects for using ACE inhibitor is bradykinin levels are up and this leads to cuff. And examiners ask this very routinely, the, what is the cause of cuff when the patients use ACE inhibitor? So the cause of cuff is increased levels of bradykinin. Also, bradykinin helps in the production of nitric oxide and prostacyclines, both of which are vasodilators dilators and because they are vasodilators they reduce the blood pressure so see how ACE inhibitors is reducing the blood pressure first mechanism was how is it reducing the blood pressure the first mechanism was decreasing the levels of angiotensin 2 the second mechanism is by increasing the concentrations of nitric oxide and prostacyclines okay and there are more mechanisms all the actions which were actually exerted by angiotensin 2 will be blocked so for example angiotensin 2 was a potent vasoconstrictor 
Now, because you are inhibiting ACE, all that vasoconstriction will go away and now vasodilation will happen. Okay, so vasodilation will happen and this will lead to reduction in uh, blood pressure. So, therefore, uh, because it is vasodilating the blood vessels, the load on the heart, preload and the resistance against which the heart has to pump, the afterload, both go down. Therefore, this is a very good drug for those patients who are going in cardiac failure. Because in cardiac failure, you want to reduce the load on heart both preload and as well as afterload and ACE inhibitor does that okay so see if you do not understand the primary thing the primary thing is here that I told you angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 by the action of ACE now ACE blockers will block all the activities performed by angiotensin 2 and in order to understand the activities performed by angiotensin 2 watch my previous video on renin angiotensin aldosterone system here they have again um, redrawn the same thing angiotensinogen from liver this comes from liver and it goes and forms angiotensin 1 in the presence of renin which is released from the jg cells all this has been discussed in my separate video and now angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by ace inhibitor and angiotensin 2 does everything to increase blood pressure and when you block ace the blood pressure increase is not there and actually it decreases okay so that's the basic theory now when is the drug used what are the therapeutic uses of this drug ACE inhibitor slows the progression of diabetic nephropathy and decreases the albuminuria. Now, this is very, very important. Now, these drugs help uh, diabetic nephropathy and the uh, theory behind this is, see, if this is the Bowman's capsule, okay, and here is the afferent arteriole and here is the glomerulus and here is the efferent arteriole. Now, one of the functions of angiotensin 2 is that it goes to the efferent arteriole and does constriction okay it does constriction of the efferent arteriole now as a result of this constriction pressure in the glomerulus goes high because you are blocking it here and because of this high glomerular pressure there are chances of uh, getting nephropathy because the filtration fraction is increased okay now if you block ACE by using ACE inhibitors, levels of angiotensin will go down and this vasoconstriction effect will go away and therefore the pressure in the glomerulus will not be increased and therefore it prevents diabetic nephropathy. Okay, Therefore, I told you in the very beginning that in patients with heart failure, in patients with diabetes, ACE inhibitors are the drugs of choice. Okay, Therefore, they are the drug of choice. Uh, and they have also written here, ACE inhibitors are first-line drugs for treating heart failure, hypertensive patients. So patients who have uh, blood pressure along with heart failure or chronic kidney disease, the drug of choice is ACE inhibitors. Okay. Now, another very important line here, all of the ACE inhibitors are equally effective. Okay. So there is no priority of one over the other, apart from some prioritization that I will tell you in a minute. Now, the pharmacokinetics, very important. How is the drug handled in the body? All of the ACE inhibitors are orally bioavailable. So they are orally available, either as a drug or a poor drug, but captopril and lisinopril, all but captopril and lisinopril undergo hepatic conversion to active metabolites. Now, these are the two drugs which do not, uh, you know, get metabolized in the liver. And because they are not being metabolized in the liver, they should be preferred in a patient who is also having hepatic impairment. So, say for example, if you have a patient whom um, you decide to give ACE inhibitors and this patient also has hepatic failure, for example. So these are the drugs of choice, lisinopril and captopril. Why? Because they are not metabolized in the liver. So say, for example, this is the liver and the liver is not working properly. So if you give other drugs, say, for example, enalapril. So enalapril has to go in the liver and therefore it will not be properly metabolized okay so you cannot give that particular drug but these two drugs can be given so that is an important point to remember another important point to remember is that fosinopril is the only ACE inhibitor that is not eliminated primarily by the kidneys. Therefore, it does not require dose adjustment in the patient with renal impairment. So basically, three drugs you have to remember, captopril, lisinopril, you can give in uh, 
hepatic failure and fosinopril that is the one that you can give in renal failure okay now there is only one formulation this this is available as iv which is enalaprilate and this is given as intravenously all the other ones are orally available but there is only one drug which is iv formulation okay and that is enalaprilate okay so remember that so this is all about the pharmacokinetics of this drug now let us talk about the adverse effects okay now side effects or adverse effects are very commonly tested in the examination and the first one listed here is dry cough and i told you why would you see dry cough because of the increase in levels of what bradykinin okay bradykinin is routinely broken down by um ACE and if you inhibit ACE angiotensin converting enzyme the levels of bradykinin goes up okay and this leads to dry cough so this is one thing that you must remember and usually this cough resolves within a few days of discontinuation of the drug so if you have a patient whom you prescribe bradykinin uh, oh, sorry whom you prescribe ACE inhibitors and the patient turns up to have a lot of cough so you just discontinue the drug convert the patient on some other drug and the patient becomes fine so this is okay some patients uh, develop angioedema which can be life threatening now potassium levels must be monitored now this is very very important you know why because again if you see my physiology video then you will understand so what was the molecule the master molecule of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system angiotensin 2 and one of the jobs of angiotensin 2 was to act on renal tubular cells to reabsorb sodium see to reabsorb sodium and to secrete potassium this was the job okay to reabsorb sodium and to secrete potassium in the urine now and angiotensin 2 obviously was being produced under the influence of ace now you have blocked ace now if ace is blocked angiotensin 2 production is blocked and when angiotensin 2 production is blocked this sodium reabsorption is blocked and this potassium excretion is blocked therefore this drug will increase the level of potassium in your bloodstream and this is why we call that hyperkalemia can occur so the drug has the risk of hyperkalemia okay because routinely angiotensin 2 was secreting potassium out of the urine out of the body and sodium was being reabsorbed but now the whole system is shut off because you have given ace inhibitor now if the whole system is shut off potassium secretion does not happen and potassium accumulates in the body and therefore hyper kalemia will happen now suppose if in these patient you also add up potassium supplements that will augment hyperkalemia or if you use potassium sparing diuretics that will also augment hyperkalemia therefore they say that potassium supplements and potassium sparing diuretics should be used with caution otherwise there will be a lot of hyperkalemia in these patients okay so you should remember these serum creatinine should be regularly checked also in these patients and one very 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 important thing is that if there is a pregnant lady you should actually avoid using ace inhibitors because they can induce fetal malformations and therefore they should not be used in pregnant ladies okay so if we one more time repeat the adverse effects the first adverse effect you have to remember is the dry cough okay uh, remember about this the second one is angioedema the third one is hyperkalemia must remember this the fourth one is that fetal abnormalities and fifth one is is creatinine okay serum creatinine and this is an important statement written an increase in serum creatinine up to 30 percent above the baseline is acceptable but if the levels of creatinine goes up to more than 30 percent then the drug should be discontinued so these are the three or four side effects now all the side effects should make sense to you if you understand and watch my previous video on renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay let's move on here they have made some diagram diagrammatic representation so that you can better remember how um, the system works basically okay so dry cough we discussed so come on tell me what is the reason of dry cough increase in the levels of bradykinin okay increase in the levels of bradykinin why does hyperkalemia happen because in the renal tubular cell the job of angiotensin 2 was to reabsorb 
sodium and to secrete potassium now the system is shut off there is no angiotensin 2 or blocked angiotensin 2 formation so potassium secretion will be blocked and this will lead to increase in potassium concentration in your bloodstream okay so hyperkalemia you understand this skin rash also angioedema can happen hypotension if the patient is uh, taking overdoses of ACE inhibitors what was the job of ACE inhibitor obviously to reduce blood pressure and therefore if the drug is taken in more than required concentration there will be hypotension okay so that should be and one um, very uncommon and rare side effect can be altered taste okay so remember all these these are must remember dry cough must remember hyperkalemia must remember skin rash or angioedema hypotension also i told you number five creatinine creatinine may increase and and it can cause fetal anomalies okay so avoid in pregnancy this is basically all about uh, ace inhibitors and i hope that you understand see in order to understand the whole concept it is important to know the physiology of the renin angiotensin system and then you understand the pharmacology in pharmacology you should know number one mechanism of action how does the drug work and to understand this understanding physiology is important okay second you should know what are the uses of the drug what are the indication third you should know what are the side effects or adverse effects if you understand these headings you master pharmacology and that's all from my side also one more thing that you need to know the pharmacokinetics and dynamics of the drugs okay and dynamics so what are the suspensions available oral suspension iv which drug to be used in renal failure or hepatic failure how are the drugs metabolized all that okay so this is all for now regarding ace inhibitors and i will see you again uh, shortly in another video for pharmacology of renal module all the very best watch the video again and again unless you master the concept okay and with this video the previous video on renin angiotensin aldosterone system is a must to watch so see you all in the next video till then take care allah hafiz